Edmund Dandies and his close friend Fernand Mondego, who is the son of a count, are on a ship owned by Morrill's Shipping Company in Marseille during the tumultuous time after Napoleon's rule in France. The ship's captain becomes ill with brain fever, forcing a diversion to Elba. They have a perilous meeting with the island's guards, but eventually receive assistance from Napoleon's personal doctor. Napoleon orders Edmund to convey a covert letter to Clarion that would contain instructions for the Bonapartists to rescue him in return for the use of the doctor. Edmund is not aware of the letter's contents because he is illiterate, but Fernand finds it and reads it. Later, they are informed that the captain is dead, and they then leave for Marseille. When they get back to France, Edmund and Dinglar were asked to report to Morel, the owner of the shipping company and there Edmund is given the position of captain of one of Morrill's ships, which infuriates Sting Lars, the ship's second-in-command. Edmund happily leaves to inform his lover Mercedes Iguanida, whom Fernand has failed to pursue because of jealousy, who he wants for himself. After Edmund had left Morrell gets a visitor, asking if anyone from his ship had gone ashore at Elba. Morrell said yes, but he's not here at the moment, and asked the man who he is to which the man replied that he is Clarion. While Edmund and Mercedes are spending time together, he proposes to Mercedes. Fernand tells Ding Lars the contents of the letter after telling Fernand of Edmund's success, which could result in treason charge as being brought against him. While Edmund is having dinner with his father and Mercedes, soldiers suddenly intrude and arrest Edmund and do not convey the reason for his arrest. As he is getting arrested, he conveys to his father that this is a mistake, and he will be back soon. Edmund is then being questioned by Gerard Villefort, a prosecutor who threatened him to have committed treason, as mentioned by Ding Lar. He asks Edmund if he had any personal contact with Napoleon when he was in Elba. Edmund told him the truth about the letter, and Gerard asked him if he delivered it. He said he didn't, and he still has it. Gerard sees the letter and asks Edmund if he knows the contents of the letter, to which Edmund says he doesn't because he can't read. To that Gerard says the letter contains important information, and that he was innocent but foolish, and asks him who he had to deliver the document to. Edmund told him that he had to deliver it to Clarion. On hearing that, Gerard burnt the letter saying that this dangerous information shouldn't get into anyone's hands. Gerard offers Edmund a carriage home. Edmund later realizes that he's being taken somewhere else. When he is out of the carriage, he asks the soldiers where he's being taken, and they tell him he's going to prison, but he tells them that he's innocent and tries to run away. He escapes and goes to Fernand's house to ask him for help, not knowing he conspired his arrest with Dinglar. Edmund gets to know the truth, and they start fighting. He then asks him why did he do that. Fernand tells him that he's the son of a clerk and he doesn't like it that he wants to be like him. The soldiers then arrive and arrest Edmund, and Fernand gives him a king's chess piece to remember better days. Gerard Villefort then scolds his father, who is clarion for almost committing treason, but he tells him that he would be the one who will be punished when the emperor returns. Gerard does that to Edmund as he was scared that he would reveal his family's involvement in treason. Then it is shown that Edmund reaches the prison and is shown his cell by the warden, who jokes about the writing on the wall that reads God will give me justice. The warden then begins to mercilessly whip Edmund and says that he will get this treatment on every anniversary. Gerard Villefort then gets the news of Napoleon escaping from Melba as he hurries to his office and orders his subordinate to pack all his files, and he realizes he has got some visitors. Fernand, Mercedes, Morel, and Edmund's father have come to meet Gerard to inquire about Edmund, but he just tells them that there are charges of treason and murder against him, and explained that the murder charges were for when he killed a soldier while trying to escape. Fernand then meets Gerard privately and asks why was he being so accommodating to which he tells him everything. Later Mercedes receives a letter about Edmund's execution that leaves her in tears. One year passes, Edmund even tries to hang himself, but he looks towards the writing on the wall God will give me justice, 
and stops himself. Four years pass, and suddenly something unexpected happens. One day as he's eating he hears some knocking sound from the ground, and suddenly a hole forms on the ground of his cell, and an elderly man emerges. He asks Edmund to forgive his intrusion, as he felt he was digging towards the other wall. He continues to tell Edmund that he's a priest and has been a prisoner there for eleven years and has spent five years digging this tunnel. He then gives Edmund some hope who was clearly disheartened and was crying. He then stands on his shoulders to look at the sky. The priest then thanks God after seeing the sky and Edmund tells him not to talk about God here. Then the priest asks him about the inscription on the wall, and he tells the priest that it has faded just how God has faded from his heart. The priest then asks him what has replaced it then. Revenge Edmund replies. The priest then asks Edmund to follow him. They crawl to the priest's cell. The priest then tells him about his plan to escape. Edmund doesn't seem interested and seems like he has accepted his faith as a prisoner. But in return for his help the priest offers him something priceless. He offers him knowledge. To which Edmund asks him if he'll teach him to read and write. To which the priest says certainly. The priest tells him that they can work all day except on two slots when they are given their meal and when the guards come to collect their toilet buckets, which they will use to hide the dirt of the digging. The priest then begins to teach him mathematics, reading, economics, and a lot more. Once while they were spending time digging, the priest tells him how he ended up in prison. He said that he was once a part of Napoleon's army and then served as a secretary to a righteous and wealthy count. The count later died, alongside rumors that he had a huge fortune hidden in treasure. Napoleon wanted to know the whereabouts of the treasure, and he imprisoned the priest as he did not tell him the location of the same. Edmund asks the priest to teach him how to fight. The priest agrees. Time passes, they keep digging. One day as they were discussing the day Edmund was arrested they realized, Gerard sent him to prison, as he was protecting someone, and how Fernand and Inglargest wanted to cause harm. Then, as they were digging, the priest found roots in the tunnel and declared that they are close to their freedom. But then suddenly the ground starts to fall on them, and the priest asks Edmund to leave him but Edmund doesn't, and tries to save him, but he leaves his plate down. The priest then shows him the island to the treasure of his count and tells him to solve the riddles, and he will get there, and to use the money for God and God alone. But Edmund says he'll use it for his revenge, and he says he doesn't trust God. But the priest tells him that God always trusts him, and dies. Then the guard comes knocking at the priest's cell for his plate for food, but he doesn't give it. So they open his cell and realize he is dead, while Edmund is underground hearing everything. The warden then asks the guards to put his body in a bag and leave. While Edmund comes to say his final goodbye, he realizes he's found a way to escape and removes the body and puts himself in the body bag. And as they carry the body bag to the cliff, another guard sees the priest's body in Edmund's cell and runs to warn the warden. But just at that moment, Edmund steals the keys from the warden's pocket and pulls him down the cliff with him. He then opens the lock on the bag, gets out, and suffocates the warden and escapes. He then gains consciousness on a beach, but there a group of smugglers watch him and tell him that they know he's a prisoner because of his clothes and because the prison is near. So the head of the smugglers, named Luigi, asks him to have a fight to death with Jacopo, a traitor of the group, and if he wins, he can join them. He wins against Jacopo and asks the leader to spare him so he would gain two fighters for his ship. Jacopo thanks Edmund and says that he will always be by his side. The leader then renames Edmund as Atara. Three months later, they arrive at Marseille, and Edmund says his goodbyes to Luigi and says he might contact him later. Jacopo follows Edmund, and they reach his old office, which is now converted to Dunlar's shipping, and he tells Jacopo to ready a ship for just the two of them and he will get to him, as he needs to meet someone alone. Edmund goes to meet Morel, who he hopes may recognize him, but he doesn't, and after inquiring about Edmund, 
Morel tells him that his father hanged himself after finding about his treason, and Mercedes has wed his friend Fernand, and they now live in Paris. As for Morel, he was forced to enter into a partnership with Dinglar, and then got kicked out of it. Jacopo and Edmund go looking for the island of Monte Cristo. They find it and follow the clues to find the treasure. They find the exquisite treasure. Edmund decides to become the Count of Monte Cristo and get his revenge. Mercedes chooses to wed Fernand out of a sense of duty and commitment to her family rather than any real feelings of love for him. Although Mercedes consents to the union, it is obvious that she still has feelings for Edmund. Mercedes is still troubled by the memories of Edmund and the injustice of his imprisonment even after several years have passed in the birth of her son, Albert. Jacopo goes to Paris to buy a beautiful villa and sends out invites for a celebration and invites everyone, even Edmund's enemies. The Count of Monte Cristo, that is Edmund, makes a grand entrance to the party. Gerard's wife then introduces her family to him. He greets and leaves them. Edmund then asks Jacopo where is Fernand and Mercedes, and he gets to know that they didn't make it. Mercedes confronts Fernand about his adultery and on realizing she knows the truth, he says that it is liberating that he doesn't have to keep lying. On the other hand, Edmund finds out that Fernand is in huge debt because of his gambling issues and doesn't receive a loan from the bank to complete his payment to the shipping company for his cotton consignment. So Fernand goes to Dunlar to ask for help. Edmund finds out that Fernand and Mercedes have a son named Albert. Albert asks his parents for permission to go for a trip to Rome. His father agrees. In Rome, Albert is present at a public celebration and a girl comes up to him and kisses him and runs away without a word. He runs behind the girl and gets kidnapped by smugglers. But guess who is there to save him? The Count of Monte Cristo. He bravely fights the kidnappers and frees Albert. We then realize that Edmund fakes the kidnapping by asking his ship's smuggler buddies to help him with it and later invites Albert to his estate. They have a meal together, and Albert requests him to come to Paris with him to meet his parents so they can thank him. Edmund refuses at first but then agrees. Edmund reaches just in time for Albert's birthday celebration. Albert introduces his parents to the Count of Monte Cristo. Edmund then asks if he can waltz with Mercedes. As they dance she mentions that he reminds her of someone special from her past. He asks her what happened to him. She tells him that he died. Gerard and his wife also arrive at the celebration. The Count of Monte Cristo thanks them for coming and speaks with Gerard privately. After that, Fernand asks Gerard to meet him on the roof, but Mercedes stops him asking him to give Albert's toast. But he ignores her and goes to meet Gerard. He asks Gerard why did the Count want to meet him. Gerard tells him that he was expecting his help to avoid inspection for his shipment. To that, Fernand said his shipment could contain gold as Albert heard him speaking about gold when he was at his estate. Fernand tells Gerard to agree to the count, and when they receive the shipment, they will have him arrested and take his gold to Fernand's estate. They make a deal. As Mercedes gets back to the celebration and begins to make the toast on her own, the Count of Monte Cristo interrupts and he makes a brilliant toast to Albert. After the toast, Mercedes notices that the Count of Monte Cristo has a habit of playing with his hair just like how Edmund did. Mercedes is surprised on noticing this. As the celebration is over, the Count of Monte Cristo gets into his carriage, but to his surprise, he has someone waiting for him there. Mercedes kisses him, saying she is extremely delighted that Edmund is back. But the Count of Monte Cristo tells her that he is not that person and asks her to leave. He then speaks to Jacopo in the carriage and threatens to kill him if he does this again. But Jacopo tells him he has wealth, a beautiful lady. He can take this and leave. He also says that he will be with Edmund even if he has to save him from himself. Edmund leaves the carriage and walks home. A shipment is being unloaded and stolen by Ding Lars who is loading it into Luigi's carriage, not knowing he's the accomplice of the Count of Monte Cristo. Police arrive at the spot and ask for Ding Lars, 
for the theft of the Count of Monte Cristo's goods. Dunlars claims that he has been set up by Fernand and starts a fight with the Count of Monte Cristo. The Count of Monte Cristo has him on the edge when he reveals that he is Edmund and has him arrested. The Count of Monte Cristo goes to meet Gerard in a steam room and makes him confess that he and Fernand killed his father, Clarion, who was the traitor and Napoleon supporter. And then the Count of Monte Cristo pulls a curtain which shows the police have been there all along, and they arrest Gerard, but seconds before that the Count of Monte Cristo reveals his true identity as Edmund to leave Gerard stunned. Mercedes goes to meet Edmund in his estate. She tells him that she is sure that he is Edmund because he mentioned Dantes. Edmund then scolds Mercedes for marrying Fernand, the man who betrayed him. She told him that she thought he was dead and he should forget everything, as God has helped him achieve this. Mercedes kisses Edmund and results in spending the night with him. Edmund leaves early in the morning, and Jacopo tells Mercedes to pack her and her son's things as they will be leaving. Mercedes reaches home to find the house in tatters, and when she goes to her room she finds Fernand frantically looking for his belongings who then asks her to pack her things as they will be leaving Paris since he is bankrupt and as the police is coming to arrest him for murder, piracy, and corruption. Mercedes refuses and says she won't accompany him. He angrily breaks a mirror and tells her that he has made arrangements for her as she is his wife and tells her to go find their son. To that Mercedes tells him that Albert is not his son, and that's the reason why she rushed to get married with him. Fernand goes to his estate to check on the shipment he stole from the Count of Monte Cristo, but there is nothing in the chests he finds there, except a king piece of chess. The Count of Monte Cristo enters and greets him saying Fernand, and he realizes who he is. Edmund challenges Fernand, and the two clash swords. After defeating Fernand, Edmund has him confess to his sins and betrayal against him. Albert finds them and starts fighting Edmund to save Fernand. Edmund begins to fight Albert, almost wins but is stopped by Mercedes' scream, who then goes on to tell Albert that he is Edmund's son. But as Edmund was fighting Albert, he was assembling his gun, that he then pointed against them after Albert was told the truth. Edmund asks for mercy. But Fernand says he'll shoot where it hurts most, and he shoots Mercedes. But at that moment Jacopo throws a knife at him, so he is not able to kill Mercedes, and he gets away. Fernand rode away, dejected, as Edmund, Jacopo, and Albert attended Mercedes. He came to terms with the fact that he had lost everything, including his family, prestige, riches, and legal innocence. Fernand, who had nothing left to support him, insisted Edmund face him in an effort to put an end to his suffering, so he challenges Edmund to fight. Jacopo tells Edmund he must finish this. They fought the intense fight that had tormented them for so long that came to an end when Edmund killed Fernand. After three months, Edmund bought the prison and went back there. He admitted to the priest that his search for vengeance had been fruitless and had only resulted in his suffering. He decided that he needed to get back to his family and his faith, and he made a commitment to Mercedes, Albert, and Jacopo. And that's the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, and subscribe if you did. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified with more cool recaps. Bye.